What's up guys, Kassar Brian here and today I'll be showing you 20 app exercises ranked from worst to best. So make sure you stay till the end because there's going to be a bonus tip that's going to help you a ton in your app training. If you haven't already done so, I would really appreciate it if you consider subscribing with the notification on. And now, let's get started. Guys, let me start off by saying these rankings are not set in stone. Everyone responds differently to different exercises. We're all different and everyone has their own favorite exercises they always come back to. I also don't recommend just focusing on isolation exercises and adding a variety of exercises to have training will provide you with the best results possible. Now let's get into the ranking. For the D-Rank, the first exercise is going to be the sit-up. During the sit-up, your hip flexors takes a lot of the engagement out of your abs, which is ineffective when you're focusing on working out your abs. On top of that, there's no muscle engagement at the top of the movement. Also, it is very easy for people to use their hands to move their neck forward, which places a lot of pressure on your spine. The final exercise on this rank is the front lever. The front lever is a highly complex and advanced calisthenic exercise. It is not a wise choice to use this exercise to work on your abs. Will it work your abs? Yes. But this movement will focus mostly on your back, even more specifically, your lats. There are simply better exercises that you can use that can help you focus on working out your abs. This exercise also requires an insane amount of muscle coordination. So again, unless you're looking for an overall body strength and are working on strengthening your back, this exercise is not meant to be used specifically for your abs. The first exercise in the C rank is the scissors. The problem with this exercise is that almost every time, your legs will fatigue first before your abs. It also does not target your abs that well compared to other exercises on higher ranks. The intensity of this exercise is very low which will make it very hard for you to see results in your ab training. However, this doesn't mean that there is no place for this exercise to be on your ab training. For example, you can take this exercise and place in the middle of your ab workout to give you some rest before moving on to the other half of your ab training. Using this exercise instead of taking a 3 second rest is not a bad idea. The next exercise is smashing that like button for the YouTube algorithm. It only takes a second and helps me a lot. I'll wait for you. Alright, once you've done that, we're moving on to toes to the bar. This is a really good exercise for your abs, but it ranks in the C category because it requires a lot of mobility. Also, your quads might end up fatiguing first before your abs, especially if you have tight quads. If you do have the mobility, this exercise will rank higher. The next exercise is windshield wipers and you can do it in two different ways. The first way requires a lot of mobility while the other way requires a good amount of lat strength for the exercise to be performed properly. However, when this exercise is performed properly, it can definitely help you a lot in strengthening your abs and toning your obliques. The final exercise in the C rank are the V up and plank. The V up is a complex ab exercise that is effective in targeting and contracting your abs but also requires balance, mobility, and quad strength to be performed properly. If any of those are lacking, then your abs won't be working to their full potential and can affect your overall results when focusing on your abs. However, like the previous exercise, mastering the technique behind this exercise can turn it into an amazing overall ab exercise that will also place emphasis on other parts of your body while working on your abs. The plank requires your entire body to be engaged to stabilize the movement and while it's true that you are engaging your core, it is not a very effective when you're focusing on building your six pack abs. For future reference, if you're going to add an isometric movement to your ab training, keep them intense or else you could be spending a really long time working out your abs and not seeing the results you're hoping for. I personally don't usually add planks to my workout routine unless it is added instead of a rest period. It simply is not a good use of your time when you have many other exercises you could use to target your abs. However, I need to add that there are variations of the plank you could use that are way more effective than the basic plank and those can rank higher. Hey guys, if you made it this far, comment below what is your favorite ab exercise that you like to do all the time. Also, don't forget there's going to be multiple bonuses tips at the end, so sit back, relax, and keep watching. Alright, moving on to the B rank, the first exercise is going to be the L sit. The only reason it's in the B rank is because it requires a lot of leg mobility and upper body strength to hold the movement. 
This is an amazing isometric exercise that is very intense and will help you see amazing results when done right. When you master this exercise, you can start moving to more advanced calisthenic exercises such as the V-sit. The next exercise is the seated L-sit raise. This exercise is a progression to the L-sit and is a great exercise that not only will target your lower abs, but also your upper abs. However, just like the L-sit, it requires a lot of leg mobility. A lot of people feel cramps in their quads when performing this exercise. Focus on building your mobility and this exercise is definitely worth adding to your ab workout routine. The third exercise in the B-ring category is the hollow extension to cannonball. This exercise could be classified as either A-ring or B-ring depending on how good you are at balancing the movement when doing this exercise. Overall, it's a good exercise that will activate both your upper and lower abs and does not require a lot of strength to perform. Just work on balancing and this becomes a very good exercise to add to your ab training. We're now moving to the cross toe touches. This exercise works on your lower abs and upper abs by moving both your torso and legs upward. Your legs might fatigue first, especially if you have tight quads when you perform this exercise. Be careful not to focus on speed when doing this exercise. It's all about the form. Mass your technique, then you can speed it up if needed. The dragon flag is the next exercise. The dragon flag is an amazing ab exercise, but it requires a lot of upper body strength to perform the movement. Your hands will have to hold your entire body while your abs only have to stabilize your lower body. Also, if you don't have enough strength to hold the movement and fall into an arch back position, you can injure your lower back. This is why it's essential to make sure you have enough strength to perform this exercise properly and perform the proper progressions before attempting this exercise. Alright, the next on this rank is the Russian twist. This exercise is a really good exercise that will target your obliques, but it does require balance. In addition, you might end up getting tired before your abs fatigue, which is not what you want because if you're working your abs, you want your abs to be burning during the exercise. When doing this exercise, make sure you are rotating from side to side to activate your obliques. Don't focus on touching the ground from side to side, but rather focus on rotating your torso, upper body, which is what will activate your obliques and provide you with the best results possible. Alright, the final exercise in the B-ring is the hanging leg raise. Let me just start off by saying, if you want to tone up your lower abs, this is one of the best exercises out there and it is one of my personal favorites. I have noticed my lower abs and the rest of my abs getting stronger and stronger the more I do this exercise. This is speaking from personal experience. It is very important to work on your mobility and flexibility to max out the performance of your training every single time. Once you do that, most of the exercises I put on this list will become way easier than they were before because you have developed the mobility you need to perform them. From there, all you need is consistent practice and you can master just about any move you set your mind on. I just want to say if you made it this far, you're amazing. Period. Comment below hashtag balls so I know who's truly serious about wanting to reach the next level. Alright, moving on to the A rank, we're starting off with the bicycle crunch. This exercise will target your obliques and rectus abdominis simultaneously. The only downside is that if you have tight hip flexors, you will struggle with this movement and your hips will fatigue before your abs due to the paddling of your legs. But overall, it's a very good exercise that you should add to your ab workout routine. If needed, loosen up your hip flexors before beginning this exercise, which will help you maximize the benefit of the bicycle crunch. The second exercise in this rank are knee raises. For this exercise, you only need a minimum amount of mobility, which puts this exercise a bit higher than hanging leg raises. With this movement, you can really focus on contracting your abs without having to worry about your legs fatiguing. Another one of my favorite exercises to target your lower abs is leg raise to hip lift. This exercise only requires a little bit of mobility and is very effective in toning your lower abs. When you perform this exercise, make sure you focus on contracting your abs as you're doing the hip lift to maximize ab engagement during the movement. The next exercise in this ring is the reverse crunch. The reverse crunch will focus on your lower abs and unlike hanging leg raises, you don't need the bar to support yourself. Make sure your back is neutral by not falling to an arch back. Keep your back straight and contract your abs as you're doing the movement. The final exercise in the A-rank category is the side plank raise. This exercise is one of the best exercises you can do to target your obliques. For this movement, 
you need to make sure you're going through the full range of motion and squeezing at the top of the movement to ensure maximum oblique activation. Stay in control and don't rush this exercise. All right, it is finally time for the S rank. In this rank, we have seated knee tucks. This exercise will work your upper and lower abs simultaneously and can be adjusted to place more focus on your obliques. In addition, you can also change up the intensity of this exercise very easily and you need a minimum amount of mobility to perform it. For balance, you can easily use your hands to stay balanced and put all your focus on contracting your abs and performing the movement appropriately. Overall, it's an amazing exercise for both beginners and more advanced users that will help work all your muscles and your abs. Alright, we are finally ready for the bonus tips that's going to help you a ton in your ab training. And because you watched this long, not only will I give you one bonus tip, but multiple other tips that will help you a lot in your ab training. Here we go. First, when you're doing your ab training, make sure you are breathing in on the eccentric phase or the, or the negative of the exercise and breathing out upon exertion. You'll see way better results by doing this. Second, squeeze your ab with every single rep. I know this is common knowledge, but a lot of times we forget this step, especially when we're in a hurry. Finally, hold the end position for a second as you're squeezing your abs. Really feel your abs being contracted in that second. This will vary depending on the exercise you're doing. Guys, if this video does not deserve a like, then I don't know what does. I gave it everything I have, and I know it's not perfect by all means, but with the resources I have, it's kind of like what I can do for now. Show sure, so some love by dropping a like for me, and comment below if you'd like me to make a video series of content like this. They do take a lot of work, but if it's going to help you, then it's definitely worth it. Also, comment below, what is your favorite ab exercise? I'm very interested to see what you guys have to say. Guys, just remember that all those exercises are not bad exercises. They are just ranked based on how effectively they target your abs without bringing all the muscles into the mix. For example, the front lever focuses more on your back than abs, so it would be ineffective for you to use it as an ab exercise when you have many other options that will help you tone up your abs and give you those six-pack abs you always wanted. Alright guys, that wraps it up. Thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. And I'll see you soon. See you guys.